Transferring wealth successfully starts with asking yourself questions that will give your family a better life now and for generations to come. In this podcast, financial professionals John and Michael from Copper Beach Financial Group guide you through eye-opening questions to help you discover the truth about your wealth. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to The Truth About Wealth with John and Michael Preece of Copper Beach Financial Group. It's, it's interesting, as I say that title, The Truth About Wealth, this is, uh, this is a part two of a two-part mini-series, if you will. Uh, Michael has been sharing with us some, some interesting truths and some things that may come to fruition we don't know. I'll let him explain that a little bit more. But if you haven't heard the first podcast, please go back and listen to that. There was a couple different things covered, and you're not going to want to miss it. But Michael, I know that the things that we're talking about today, they're proposals, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. proposals. So we're not we're not sure if if anything that we talked about on the last podcast or what we're going to talk about today will actually become law. But as as I said on the last podcast, I do think it's important to at least be aware of it so that you're educated on what might come down the mm-hmm. pike, so that you can work with your advisors to be able to manage whatever planning might benefit you if these provisions do become become law. Yes, right now these are proposals, so uh, we don't want to ne- necessarily everybody to you know, jump and make it a lot of drastic changes, but you should certainly talk with your advisors because it still might make sense to do some planning in light of these proposals because if they do come to fruition, if you do the planning beforehand, obviously you'll be in good shape. So we'll yeah. talk a little bit about that towards the end of today's today's episode. All right. Where do we start today then? I actually wanted to start um, by clarifying a a mistake I made. Um, I actually misspoke on last podcast. I was talking about the proposed income or uh, capital gain increases, Mm -hmm. that top rate. And I inadvertently said that that would go into effect under this proposal upon the date of the enactment of the law. Actually, if the law does come to fruition, the increased gain would apply as of September 13th of, of this year, 2021. That's kind of a subtle difference, but I do think it matters because some people might be trying to uh, rush to do some some capital gain planning, if you will, maybe possibly liquidating assets today at the lower rate as of the, way, the date we're recording this and probably the date that this comes out. This is after September 13th, so if you do it even right now and this law does come into fruition, you still would be paying that higher capital gain rate if that does apply to you. So I wanted to just clarify that in case um, in case anybody you know was trying to uh, maybe do some planning with that in mind. So I wanted to wow. start there, uh, but we wanted to really cover today more on the estate planning uh, potential changes that, that are in this proposal. And I think, again, when we look at a family, We really work a lot generationally, and and advanced estate planning is something that all of our families uh, undergo and and that we focus a lot of our time on with them. So I think for today's episode, these provisions um, really could have a a drastic impact on a lot of the advanced planning that families have um, done in the past. And again, depending on what comes to fruition, might not be able to do in the future. So I wanted to start there. Yeah, and I know that this is something you guys mentioned. Uh, you spoke a little bit about while you had your your family conference, right? I mean, this is this is right up the, the purpose and the reason that you have that family conference is to educate um, your clients on on the things that maybe they're hearing bits and pieces in the news, but you guys do a deep dive. We had a lot of conversations about I think what we're going to talk about uh, right right here. So yes, it's definitely top of mind for a lot of the families we work with, and I know. A lot of the advisors that we work with as well, they're hearing the same thing from their clients. And so, yeah, again, it's a, it's somewhat difficult for us because you're, you're trying to do a lot of planning with incomplete data, i.e. Mm-hmm. we're not sure if this is even going to come to fruition. So it's it's challenging. It's a challenging environment right now for everyone. For sure. Yeah, and I'm going to jump in here. The, the good news about the conference in one aspect, a lot of the planning that we put our put in place with our families, a lot of it will be grandfathered to right. the new laws. So th- our clients are really happy that we did this planning three, four, five years ago, 10 yeah. years ago, whatever it was. They've taken full advantage of the, of the maximization of some of these techniques that might go away. And I'll let Michael explain that. So they're pretty, pretty excited they started early. For mm-hmm. people that haven't started their planning, this could be a devastating change in their estate planning. The first major change is really a, an acceleration of the reduction 
in the gift and estate exemption amount. And on prior podcasts, we've talked about how in the TICJA law, that was the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that went into effect under President Trump, under that law, families of, of wealth were really uh, given a boon there because that increased, basically doubled the amount of assets that you can transfer to your heirs via um, a gift or at your death via your estate to basically 11 million per person. So families had 23 million right now that they can gift without paying any gift and estate taxes. Now, under that TICJA law, that was scheduled to be cut in half in 2026. So it sunsets, and that was mm-hmm. part of uh, the reconciliation provisions that that uh, the Republicans at that time needed to abide by to get this uh, those tax cuts passed. So this proposal that is um, put been put forth by the Democrats would really just accelerate that. So starting next year, that um, reduction would occur. So now you would uh, have about five million per person index for inflation that you can now gift. So it basically cuts that in half. And really for the last year or so we've we've been talking with families and i know a lot of the other advisors we work with have been talking with families on this is that was really sort of a use it or lose it proposition right you had through 2026 uh, up until this proposal to be able to use that increased exemption and if you didn't use it it would sunset and it would sort of uh, expire worthless well this provision is just accelerating that further so if that is a concern of yours and you think that that might come to fruition you have now even less time um, to work with your advisors to take advantage of that if that's a part uh, of your plan or would fit with your plan. So I think just to start there, that's probably the biggest the biggest change. And that will take effect January 1st, 2022. Correct. Correct. So you have a window from now to year end to do advanced planning to move assets if that's appropriate. So it's it's a limited time. I think, again, if you're someone out there who's been maybe in conversations with your attorney or your other advisors on possibly using this exemption, I think now is, you know, time to really, really start having that conversation. Again, we don't know if this is going to become final law. I happen to think, you know, last podcast, I sort of interjected my personal opinions. I don't have a crystal ball or really a lot of insight there. Just a gut reaction. I think this one will, if, if something is passed, I think this will, will go into final law. So I think that it's something you should probably talk with your advisors on. And if nothing else, at least have the conversation, be educated. Yeah. And I'm going to jump in here for a second, uh, for, uh, if, if I can. Uh, and the reason why, and you might be listening to this information saying, well, why did, why did the affluent, wealthy families, why did they get that credit pushed up to $23 million? And if you, if you understand the, the Trump philosophy, he was trying to protect family businesses, because mm-hmm. you understand these state tax, when you transfer your, your family business to your children, if it's not protected, they have to pay tax on that transfer. So he's trying to up that credit to allow more businesses to transfer to the second and third generations to keep our country you know, growing as a society with business, businesses hiring more people as, as, as time went on. That's the reason that that is, that is a factor in, this, in the estate planning models. This is something that really actually isn't in the proposal that many people thought would be in the proposal, and that's the elimination of the stepped-up income tax basis. And I think we may have even talked about that on a prior podcast, um, because that was something that particularly President Biden has really had on the docket for pretty much since um, since he started running for president. That was one piece of legislation that he wanted to change. And what that would do is, again, if you... um, had an asset upon your passing that that had a large unrealized capital gain so think a piece of real estate that you bought maybe years ago that has appreciated substantially under current law if you pass away while you own that asset the assets basis steps up to its value as of your the date of death meaning your heirs could then sell that property without paying uh, capital gains tax that asset was typically a part of your taxable estate. So if you had a, a taxable estate, you would probably pay estate tax on that if it, if it was over that exemption amount that I mentioned earlier. But you would avoid that, that capital gain tax. And, and President Biden has really wanted to eliminate that. However, in this latest proposal, uh, there really hasn't been any changes to that. So we'll see again. You know, that's one of those things that maybe <clears throat> it's a proposal that might, that might come back in. You know, this, the, mm-hmm. the Senate still has... Uh, their version of this bill that they need to draft. So we'll see. They have to 
put all the put their heads together between the House and the Senate and see what's see what's going to stay and what's going to go. Yeah, what was gray in that, which a lot of people were concerned about, is it wasn't just going to hurt the affluent group. It, it, think about your mom and dad. Eric, they owned that bought a house at $100,000 40 years ago. Now it's worth a million dollars because it's just pure appreciation. So when your mom and dad would have passed away and transferred the house to you, you'd have to pay capital gains on that house. Yeah, there was yeah. an exemption amount, I think, that they had proposed, yeah, but, but it was it gray. Was, it was a little gray and what it would cover and... You know, there's likelihood that. So we're glad that's not that's yeah. not proposed in this new, at least this new set of yeah, absolutely uh, outline. So, yep, yeah, I think we we had a, a family that we work with who's um, another family member bought a piece of real estate in the Bay Area of California. I think probably forty some odd years ago yeah. for I think it was like forty or fifty thousand dollars, and then sold it recently this year for a million five. I think was the number. So you can you can imagine there's probably a lot of people out there that have that type of, of story where if that provision does become law, then that, that could have a big impact. So yeah, we're, we're glad that that's not there, but you know, again, we never know. Will that, will that sneak back in? We'll see. On the estate planning side, that's really changed, really has a lot to do with advanced estate planning and really a, a hallmark of advanced estate planning that, that a lot of advisors have used for, for years. And that's this concept of a grantor trust. And we've talked about this on prior podcasts. Um, in fact, probably a year ago, we did a, an entire podcast on a sale to a defective grantor trust. And that was a, a transaction that really has a lot of benefit from an advanced estate planning standpoint. And uh, if you if you want to go back and listen to that, it's a great podcast to listen to. Uh, however, if this provision of this proposal becomes law, it will essentially eliminate what we talked about a year ago. It would be very, very difficult to accomplish that transaction. It really wouldn't have much benefit at all. So we wanted to talk a little bit about um, if you're in, in a, uh, let's say, a business owner or a high net worth family that you're looking at doing some advanced gifting. And a lot of the advanced gifting that you would do is to these types of grantor trusts. You have maybe even more of a limited window to take to take advantage of them. So again, if this is something that you've talked to your advisors about in the past and you're concerned about this, just bring it up to them. It's 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 a good again to start that conversation. But what these grantor trusts are is a sort of a hybrid uh, trust, if you want to call it that. Is it is a trust that is assets owned by this trust would be out of the family's taxable estate, but the grantor of that trust would be considered the owner of those assets, of the trust assets for income tax purposes. It's a, it's a, again, it's that hybrid. So it's out of your estate, the grantor pays income taxes on any of the earnings inside of that trust. And that would allow you to do a lot of what I we talked about last year, that sale to a defective trust. So because the taxpayer is the same in between the individual and the trust, in that transaction, you would sell an asset to the trust. If that asset had a capital gain in, built into it, there wouldn't be any recognition event because the taxpayer was the same. Mm. It's a, it's, a lot of people think it's a very quirky area of the tax law. Um, there's reasons why it was put in place, which we don't have time to talk about today. But a lot of the Democrats that are putting these proposals forth view these trusts as abusive. They, they believe that they should be curtailed significantly. And so, as I mentioned, w with this proposal would eliminate your ability to sell assets to that grantor trust. And any assets owned by a grantor trust, that trusts that are created after 1-1 of 2022, so any assets owned by those grantor trusts, and if the grantor passed away, those assets will be includable in that grantor's estate, which is not, again, under current law, the case. So it's a, believe it or not, again, this is not a area of this proposal that you're probably gonna hear a lot on on mainstream media, but it does for, in our world and for a lot of the families we work with that are considering uh, using these, this advanced estate planning concept, it ha it's, a, it's a pretty big change. So it really is something that, again, if you've been on the fence about doing this type of planning, talk with your advisors because again, the trust, this would go into effect after the first of the year. So if you've already formed a grantor trust, as you mentioned that a lot of this is grandfathered. So if you do have a trust that is a grantor trust that you put in place uh, you know, this year or prior years, you are for the most part 
good to go. You'd be grandfathered here, although I'll get to uh, get to maybe a caveat of that in a second under this proposal, but go ahead, Doug. Yeah, and, and right now you can imagine that we have two or three new families we're working with now that currently do not have these trusts in place, and I told them four or five months ago, you better move it. You got till year end to get these trusts established because, it, again, if, if the proposals come through, you, you took advantage of it because you made time to do so. But if beyond one one twenty two, you won't have that option anymore. It can have substantial impact on the on the family's wealth uh, generationally. And the other component is you can imagine all the law firms that are estate firms are extremely busy. Mm -hmm. with these with these trust designs so so if you haven't looked at it and you have a sizable of a state uh, you, you get back to your advisors as soon as possible if you haven't considered this and ask them about the grantor trust rules changing and should you take advantage of and putting a trust in place currently to take advantage of it because beyond one one twenty two again if everything comes through you're not going to be able to do this which is going to really be a dramatic shift in the in the estate planning world for leveraging some of these benefits to family generational wealth transfers. Yeah, I, I was going to wait, and, guys. I was going to wait to the end of the podcast to bring this up, but Michael has said at least three to four times, if this situation fits you, contact your advisor. And John, you just said it again. Uh, I'm going to do one better. If your advisor is not talking to you and proactively talking to you about this situation, these situations that Michael's bringing up, even if it's just in case to make sure that you're covered, you need to get a new advisor. <laughs> I'm just, just going to say it because these well, are Well, that's another important. discussion for another day. Or well, <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. just saying you're talking you're, – you're proactively talking to your clients about this, and I think that that's the right thing to do for anybody who is yeah. – is, is managing these families and, and helping them. If if your audience isn't being spoken to or, or, or their advisors aren't being proactive, they need to talk to somebody else. And I'm going to say it's Copper Beach. So we'll give the contact information at the end. But I, I just hear this reoccurring need, right? And, 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 and Michael, you're the one saying it most often. Hey, talk to your advisor. You don't want to run out of time. Um, if your advisor is not talking to you, you got to change. That, that's all. I'm sorry, I derailed this. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, and the, and the, <laughs> and the follow up on that comment, we did it. We did the Secure Act. Remember the uh -huh. two bike podcast we did a month or so ago. I mean, we talked to families now. We're, we're doing tax planning at year end, as Michael stated earlier on the on the first podcast last last week. Is it is it CPAs are bringing that up? They're not even educating their clients yeah. on these large IRA and what's going to affect it as they transfer these IRAs to the kids. So so a lot of these proposals, a lot of these changes, for some reason, the average the average American is not hearing about or they're not reading about in detail. So again, that's why we thought this, these podcasts would be important. Again, not to scare anybody. Mm -hmm. but to make you aware that these these are major changes if they occur and if you haven't done anything to, 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 to take advantage of the current law, you should now look into it. Again, I'll say it one more time. Contact your advisor and make sure that they're on top of this with you. Yeah, I mean, these grantor trust provisions that they're, that they're talking about changing, believe it or not, these have been really on the docket, if you want to call it that, for a lot of years. There's something called the Green Book. That's the presidential yeah. administration's sort of wish list of, of tax changes that they might want to make. And these changes have been in that Green Book for a lot of years. Uh, mm. I think even probably going back to the Clinton administration. So they've been around for a long time. So it's not that the, some of these provisions are brand new. However, I... I and again, I have not been around as long as some other people. I don't recall them becoming a, a part of a even a proposed legislation. They have really just stayed in that green book, which is almost like a, a proposal for a proposal, if you want to think of mm -hmm. it that way. So does that mean that this time it's going to become final law? Again, we don't know. But it's something that I think you should at least talk uh, talk about again with your advisors. And, and if your advisor listening, you should be you know, broaching the subject with your with your clients um, where it applies. So it's 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 difficult right now because you don't want to, as we've said, you don't want to scare people, but at the same time, you you want to educate them and you want to be able to give them the information that they could make an informed decision exactly. because there might be things that that they could put in place today that you know, listen, it's even if the law doesn't come into effect, it might still be a good decision to do it now, right? So there's there's a lot of that kind of conversations that we're having with a lot of the families that that um, we represent. That it's just it's maybe accelerating the process a little bit more than it otherwise would. 
All right, so let's talk about, I mentioned, again, keep talking about these grantor trust provisions, but but it, it does matter, and I want to be cover the bases here as it relates to, I mentioned when this the, when these provisions come, or would come or go into effect, and that would be at the start of next year. So any trust created after the start of the year, this provision, uh, these provisions would apply to. There is a caveat to that, and that that is that the trusts not only have to be created, but they also have to be fully funded after that period of time. So this might be an, a, a trust that's a grantor trust that was created years ago, but if the trust is still being funded, maybe that's um, an irrevocable life insurance trust that premiums Gifting. are being made or, or future gifts that are being planned to be made to that trust. The trust has to be both created before the, the start of the year and fully funded to avoid some of these changes. So that's, again, a small caveat that, you know, even if you're thinking you might be okay because you've gotten a trust that's already drafted, just go back and look at maybe what the, what the plan was that was put in place to make sure that you're protected there. So I did want to, I did want to touch on that. So I mean, those are really from the estate planning side of things. I think the, the two biggest changes, again, these grantor trust changes, and then the acceleration of the a reduction in that estate exemption. So those are the two kind of key parts there to this proposal that a lot of families we work with are focusing on. All right. Yeah, so you can see the combination of the income tax changes and the estate tax changes, uh, it, can, it can affect the family big time generationally. And you know how we think, Eric. We're, Absolutely. We want to we want to maximize wealth generationally with that asset protection theme, with, with a, a tax efficient modeling, and then layer it with governance to make sure there's proper trustees in place and proper folks in place to take care of the assets for the family going forward. So these are all very serious topics. Uh, and, you, and and for the last couple of years, we've been talking about planning as a very serious matter to families. And a lot of families haven't done a lot of good planning, at least we find in a, in we, when we meet families, and we've said this before, there's, there's a tremendous weakness in their planning, and it's really not their fault. It's the lack of you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's really just being educated and, and again, getting back to our other podcasts, we've talked about our conference we do every year. That's the purpose of those conferences. We keep educating our families to teach them to think differently or educate them on topics and themes they might not be aware of that could have a important decision making uh, option for their, for their planning. I give you an example. I mentioned the ESOP in that, in that previous uh, podcast and two of our families saw that presentation by one of our specialists and adopted to do an ESOP strategy for their companies and sold their companies to an ESOP all tax free because that was the dynamics of it so it's really these 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 this education is important and again for people that are not getting that type of information from their current advisors they should seek to get that from them, if they can't give it to them, they, they to your point, Eric, earlier, they might be they might want to look at other advisors. Now, I bring that up for a reason. Again, I'm not trying to again steer people in a in a in a vacuum here, but we call it the plateauing effect. There are a lot of families we work with that started as small at one part of their life, and they had an attorney or CPA that they're best friends with, they, their neighbors, or they're part of their 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 club someplace, and they'd stay with them, and they've been very very good advisors to them. But we often find that you start growing your net worth and create more complexity. The need to have more sophisticated planning in place is important. So it's not that you should fire or get rid of your current advisors, but layer in a specialist that has expertise in these areas that can help work with your part of your team to advance these concepts. So it's again, it's not a, um, a black or white issue. It's just plugging someone else in that has the expertise. So with that said, that would be a clear recommendation for me that if you had a weakness in your advisory team that didn't have a good education on these sophisticated options, you seek someone who does and plug them in as one of your one of your new advisors as a specialist. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, bottom yeah. line is if you drove a Ford F-150 for a long time and your neighbor was a shade tree mechanic, that worked great. But now you have a Tesla. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. have the equipment. Exactly. He doesn't have the skills or knowledge or, <laughs> you know, everything gets upgraded. And as their wealth gets upgraded, that only makes sense that it's, it's nothing against your buddy, your neighbor, your cousin, whoever's been helping you. It's just the fact that they don't have all the tools and resources that, that other advisors do. I mean, I mean, again, and I'll just be real subtle here. Uh, most people are very good procrastinators. 
<laughs> it's human nature. That doesn't it's sound the, very subtle. It's, it's, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know me, right? John. <laughs> so, so, so that's a challenge for a lot of us. They put things behind. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And and Eric, you've been talking to us for more than a couple of years now, and you know how passionate we are about getting our clients motivated to get on their planning and stay with it and finish it where it has impact. So it's yeah. the same message here. If you're procrastinating on this on this stuff, pay attention to it. It's important. Remember, it's not necessarily for you and your and your wife or you and your husband. It's for the family. It's a yeah. family focus that the what you do or not not do for your family can affect them dramatically going forward. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about the our conference that we had where on our last podcast where we had a client actually go through our our family genealogy, which was uh, really enlightening for for us and our families. A lot of stuff we didn't know about, but um, the, one of the, the our favorite questions is how do you want to be remembered? Mm-hmm. And I think that could that be answered in a lot of different ways as it relates to this this tax law change or potential change, you know, that, that comes into that question. We've seen that time and again, where families have procrastinated dad, like you said, and maybe just, they missed the opportunity to take advantage of something that could really have a dramatic impact in their, in their generational plan. Um, so it's, again, we don't know if any of this is going to come to fruition at all, but you know, if, if it doesn't come to fruition, it's always good to, to get back in touch with your advisors and get a sort of state of the union, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I could tell you a funny story. Years ago, I had a very good client, and, and I use him as a reference. Um, he said, anytime you need me as a reference, I'm more than happy to talk to a new, new, new client of yours, et cetera, et cetera. You have to know Frank. He was a, he's a really smart business owner, but this stuff is too complex for him. He just trusted me and my team to get it done right, and most certainly we did it right. So I referred him to one of my clients, and the client called him up and said, hey, Frank, tell me a little bit about John and Michael and, and Copper Beach. Gina, I don't know what they do, but he's the biggest pain in the ass I ever met in my life. He makes me do things <laughs> that I don't pay attention to. I always thought that was so funny because that's you have to know Frank. He meant that. He's yeah. I, listen. These guys know what they're doing. I trust them, and he's he's on top of everything. But so so my point that is that that's not bragging about us. It's just how we how we view our world. We we you have to stay on top of this stuff to make impact, and yeah. that's really what what families hire us to do from the begin with. Well, as we wrap up today's podcast, Michael, I know that you've been covering a lot of stuff. Is there anything else that needs to be said before we wrap up? Well, there's a lot more that's in this proposal that we don't have time to really dig into. So th- there might be elements of this pr- uh, proposal that actually have a big impact on your planning if you're a listener out there. So again, uh, if we didn't cover it today, we tried to s- sort of stick to the highlights here, but there's other provisions in that bill that we don't have time for. So talk to your advisors. So, the, But I think this was a good sort of uh, high level of mm-hmm. what might be coming down the pike. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the one to say it. If your advisor is not talking to you, you need to talk to Copper Beach. So That being said, I'll say it. I know you guys are both very humble in the work that you do, but I'm just going to be very direct. How do they get a hold of you if their advisors are not doing what they should be doing? Uh, You can reach us on social media, on LinkedIn. Uh, We have have profiles on LinkedIn. You can reach out to us on our website is www.cbfgllc.com. And our phone number, if you want to call us on the phone, is area code 856-988-8300. Gentlemen, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for doing what you do, staying on top of not only all this information, but staying on top of your clients to make sure that they're taking advantage of the the planning and the things that they can do to better their wealth and their families generationally. I think it's a beautiful thing, and, and I hope the audience has learned that by now with all these podcasts, and, and you've, you've done a ton of them. So if you're listening and this is your first time, you've got a lot to peruse. You've got a lot to go through. Take a look at all the podcasts they've done. It's all about education and information and, and a lot of fun along the way. So please take a look. Again, guys, thank you so much for your time. And of course, the last thank you goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Truth About Wealth podcast with John and Michael Paris. If you have thank not... You you bet. <laughs> Hang on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was a little early on that. That's okay. <laughs> if you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when John and Michael come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it really easy to share these podcasts with your friends and family. And heck, if your advisor isn't talking to you, share this with them. Make them, make them uh, think twice or make her think twice about the information they're, they're spreading. Again, thank you so much for tuning in today. For everyone at Copper Beach Financial Group, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Truth About Wealth podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. 
The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Copper Beach Financial Group. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. This material is for informational purposes only. Neither APFS nor its representatives provide tax, legal, or accounting advice. Please consult your own tax, legal, or accounting professional before making any decisions. Copper Beach is not affiliated with American Portfolios Financial Services, Inc. and American Portfolios Advisors, Inc. Securities offered through American Portfolio Financial Services, Inc., a member of FINRA SIPC, Investment Advisory and Financial Planning Services offered through American Portfolio Advisors, Inc., an SCC Registered Investment Advisor. These opinions are subject to change at any time without notice. Any comments or postings are provided for informational purposes only and do not constitute an offer or a recommendation to buy or sell securities or other financial instruments. Readers should conduct their own review and exercise judgment prior to investing. Investments are not guaranteed, involve risk, and may result in a loss of principal. Past performance does not guarantee future results. Investments are not suitable for all types of investors. Copper Beach is an unaffiliated entity of American Portfolios Financial Services, Inc. and American Portfolios Advisors, Inc. Any opinion expressed in this forum is not the opinions of American Portfolio Financial Services, Inc. and American Portfolio Advisors, Inc. and have not been reviewed by the firm for completeness or accuracy.